everyone, my name is Christina. I am one of the application engineers at ThermalCare, and today we are going to be discussing internal bypass lines and valves. So before we get started, just to remind everyone, we want to be protecting ourselves, so please follow your company's rules for personal protective equipment. So I'm going to put my safety glasses on here, and we will get started. So we will start with what is the internal bypass line. This line essentially connects the chiller outlet piping to the chiller return piping. And on this line, there will be a manual bypass valve that will be set from factory. So now we are going to talk about why we include an internal bypass. And this is essentially to protect the chiller from damage. So if in your process flow is inadvertently shut off, this could cause damage to the pump motor and cause the components to burn out. So by including this bypass, we will ensure that flow will properly be moving through the chiller even if situations were to occur where flow would be shut off in process. An example of how this might happen is if you have flow control valves that are based off of temperature and they start to throttle down. Thermal care chillers include built-in safeties that will shut the chiller down in low flow situations. However, situations can occur where your process set point is low and flow is trapped in the evaporator itself. In situations like these, we could run into freezing damage that could cause catastrophic issues to the refrigeration circuit itself. Thermal care uses a manual bypass valve instead of a pressure actuated valve to avoid catastrophic failures of the pressure actuated valve itself. The manual valve is set from factory and should be ready to go upon receiving the unit. So now we are going to talk about where the internal bypass line and valve is located. So we can find this first by following the pump discharge all the way into the chiller outlet piping. At the connection here you will see a T that connects the chiller outlet to the chiller inlet return line right there. Along this line you will see a manual bypass valve and that is a bypass valve used in this line. So we're going to talk about how to set the internal bypass valve. First thing we are going to want to do is turn off the chiller completely and then close the supply and return valves external to the chiller itself. From there, we will want to turn on the chiller so that the internal pump begins operating and circulating flow through the chiller itself. At this point, the internal bypass valve should be completely open. What we will want to start to do is throttle down that valve until we are at a point where there is reduced flow through the chiller itself. At some point, the chiller low flow alarm will go off. At this point, we will want to then take advantage of the chiller being off and open the internal bypass valve slightly so that it is at a point where it can protect the pump and evaporator. We then turn the chiller back on to make sure that the alarm is now off and everything is suited and ready for process. At this point, you can open up the supply and return valves external to the unit, and you can ensure that you have protected the pump and evaporator while ensuring you get the most flow to process itself. Thank you everyone for joining us as we chatted about our internal bypass lines. Feel free to contact us at thermalcare.com if you would like any additional information. Thank you.